Coming to you from Bravo Performing Arts, this is the Hour to Empower podcast, created by Brooke students for Brooke students. Today's episode is a celebration of Black history in America. Hour to Empower has spent weeks researching and considering the many Black figures of the past who have built America and those who are shaping the future today. Today's podcast will only scratch the surface of the amazing people who have shaped our country throughout history. It's a very special episode, and we hope you enjoy it. Do you want to learn about creating a podcast? Do you have an idea for a topic or a podcast segment? Any 6th, 7th, or 8th grader can join our team at any time. We meet every Tuesday and Thursday after school. If you'd like to join or want to know more, please email bravo at op97.org. If you like what you hear today, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for the latest episodes of Hour 2 Empower. Okay, enjoy the show. Hi there, I'm Mariko. And I'm Kailani. Today we're going to be teaching you all about Katherine Johnson, Mary Jackson, and Dorothy Vaughn. So Mariko, who was Katherine Johnson? Katherine Johnson was an American mathematician born on August 26, 1918 in White Sluffers Springs, West Virginia. Her love of math drove her to become a NASA employee. As she worked her way up to the top, she was able to help send astronauts to the moon. Cool, and what was she known for? Well, Kailani, Katherine Johnson was known for helping NASA put an astronaut into orbit and helping put a man on the moon. She was also known for asking lots of questions and always wanted to learn more about her work, even before NASA. She didn't give up even when times got rough. When she retired from NASA, she loved playing card games, traveling, and of course spending time with her friends and family. I love playing card games as well. I guess we have something in common. What impact did she have? She helped send the first American astronauts into space. You wouldn't believe how much work that takes. She is also one of the most celebrated black women in space and science. And as a black woman working for NASA in the 1950s and 60s, she overcame many social blocks and racial discrimination. Wow, that's really awesome. Thanks for sharing. Moving on to the next person we have, Mary Jackson. That's right. So, Kailani, who was Mary Jackson? Mary Jackson was born on April 9, 1921 in Hampton, Virginia. She was an aerospace engineer and mathematician. She loved science and was committed to improving people's lives around her. In 1942, she graduated from Hampton Institute with a degree in physical science and math. After that, she took a job as a math teacher in Calvert County, Maryland. It took her six jobs, including this one, to get her into Langley Memorial Astronautical Laboratory, segregated West Area Computing Section. For all that hard work, there was still segregation. That's amazing, but still segregation? Come on. What was she known for? Well, she was known for her brilliant mind in science and her love of helping people. Oh, and one more thing, she never backed down from a challenge. In 1970, she helped youngsters make their own wind tunnels to conduct their very own experiments. And she heard that if she entered a training program, she could get a promotion from a mathematician to an engineer. But she definitely had to get a permission from the city of Hampton to join her white peers. That was definitely a challenge. But guess what? She did it. She was now NASA's first black female engineer. That definitely had an impact on NASA. After that, she got a promotion to Langley's Federal Women's Program Manager. She worked hard for the next generation of female engineers, science, and mathematicians. Now, since we learned about Katherine Johnson, Mary Jackson, it's time to learn about Dorothy Vaughn. That's right. We are on the last person, Dorothy Vaughn. So who was Dorothy Vaughn? Dorothy Vaughn was born on September 20th, 1910, Kansas, Missouri. She was also a mathematician and computer programmer who made key contributions to the beginning years of the U.S. space program. She worked as a mathematician on the Scott Launch Vehicle Program that sent America's first satellite into space. She worked for opportunities for the women of West Computing as well as women in other departments. What accomplishments did she have? She was promoted to the West Computers in 1949 and was NASA's first black supervisor. You know what's really cool? A crater on the moon and a satellite were named after her. I want a crater named after me. She was also awarded the Congressional Gold Medal. Well, that's a wrap. We hope you learned something about Katherine Johnson, Mary Jackson, and Dorothy Vaughn. Thank Thank you you for listening. listening. Oh, hey, Gavin. Hi, Kieran. Hi. 
I was just getting this week's episode of Amazing Authors ready. Wanna join? Yeah, let's get this episode started. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Amazing Authors. In last week's episode, we talked about the five authors, Amanda Gorman, Gwendolyn Brooks, Maya Angelou, Michelle Obama, and Kwabe Alexander. After being so incredibly inspired by them, today we are going to talk about five more. That's right. Today, we will be talking about these authors, Brian Stevenson, Jason Reynolds, John Lewis, Jacqueline Woodson, and Trevor Noah. They are such amazing people, and we hope you enjoy it. All right, let's get started. Hey, Gavin, I was just reading a book called Just Mercy, which is about this incredible lawyer and his reflections on his personal experiences in the criminal justice system and works to make the world a better place. He even founded the Equal Justice Initiative. That's a human rights organization that helps people get the justice they deserve. The lawyer's name is Brian Stevenson. Do you know anything about him? Well, sure. There's even a movie about that book. It's also called Just Mercy and stars Michael B. Jordan. Brian Stevenson's work often has to do with justice, and he has argued in front of the Supreme Court five times, winning four. Now that's incredible. He's also won numerous special awards and has even been on national television for his works, freeing Walter McMillan and Anthony Ray Hilton. Brian Stevenson has received over 40 honorary doctoral degrees, including degrees from Harvard, Yale, Princeton, the University of Pennsylvania, and Oxford University. Wow! Those are some awesome facts. Also, did you know that there is a children's adaptation of the Just Mercy book? If not, I highly recommend it. No, I did not know that. That's spectacular. I'll definitely check it out. Do you have any more people you think we should talk about? Of course. I also wanted to talk about Jason Reynolds. He is a world-renowned author and is an inspiration to me and many other kids across the world that have had the chance to read his books. That includes Kids at Brooks, as we had the chance to read Stamped, which is based off of the book by Ibram X. Kendi, another great person. Do you know some other facts about Jason Reynolds? Sure. Jason Reynolds is a 37-year-old author that has won numerous awards for his books in the track series, Long Way Down, For Everyone, As Brave As You, All American Boys, The Boy in the Black Suit, Stamped, Miles Morales, When I Was the Greatest, and Look Both Ways. Whoa! I've read a lot of those books, and they are outstanding! What awards did these books win? Well, to start off, We have to say that he is a New York Times bestseller, and he was named the National Ambassador of Young People's Literature by the Library of Congress. His book, Long Way Down, received a Newbery Honor, a Prince Honor, a Coretta Scott King Honor. His 2019 book, Look Both Ways, was a National Book Award finalist, and his book, Ghost, from the track series, was also a National Book Award finalist. And those are just a few of his awards. Wow! He really is special. And is such a good author and poet. Oh, and for everybody listening, here is a fun fact about him. He didn't read a full book cover to cover until he was 17 years old. So even if now you don't like books, wait a few years and you might become an author. Cool. Though he did like writing poetry as a kid. After being inspired by rap, He started writing his poems around the age of nine. Nice! An inspiring quote from him is, Here's what I plan to do. Not write boring books. I really like that quote, and I want to read his books after that. Great! You should check it out. Also, his favorite book is Black Boy by Richard Wright. I remember finding that book on a bookshelf in my house, and after reading the first few pages, I was really enjoying it. I was so happy when I found out that Jason Reynolds also likes that book. Awesome! Jason Reynolds is a really inspiring person. I hope you've learned some things about him. Oh, and Kieran, now I have someone that I think we should talk about. Great! Who is it? Alright, 
This person that I think we should talk about is Jacqueline Woodson. So let's get started. Here are a few facts about her and her books. She loves fall and when it is quiet and sunny. This is probably because that's good writing weather. Cool. I also think that's good writing weather. She's also just so amazing. And one of the quotes that I really like from her is when she says this. The work I do is considered young people's literature, but I like to think it's for all people who are curious and thinking about the world and thinking about how they can have an impact on it. Wow. I really like that quote too. Me too, as both of us are people that are curious and want to have an impact on the world. If you want to hear more from that clip, check out the video on JacquelineWoodson.com. After watching that video, I was truly inspired and really wanted to read her books. Speaking of her books, she has wrote so many. Each and every one is so good, and we suggest them to people listening. Yes, we do. Oh, and Gavin, do you have any fun facts about her? Yes, I do. A really interesting fun fact about her was that she was in a commercial for a maple syrup brand at just the age of two. Wow, that's really cool. What else? Well, did you know that she writes with her notebook sideways? And when she was a kid, she wrote with her notebook upside down. That's so cool. I'm glad she found the best way to write for her. Yeah, and Kieran, did you know some of the awards that she's won? Well, sure. Did you know that before Jason Reynolds became the National Ambassador of Young People's Literature, Jacqueline Woodson had served in that role from 2018 to 2019? Awesome. What awards have her books won? Well, she's won some really special awards. She's won the John Newberry Medal four times, has been a National Book Award finalist three times, has won the Coretta Scott King Award twice, and has even won the National Book Award too. She has won many, many, many other outstanding awards, too, such as the Hans Christian Andersen Award, which is the highest international recognition given to an author and an illustrator of children's books. Wow, she really is a special person. And the themes of her books talk about are really inspirational. Thank you, Jacqueline Woodson. That's right. And great job. Those are some really nice facts about Jacqueline Woodson. Now... This next person is both an author and a civil rights activist. In fact, he got to march beside Martin Luther King Jr. at the march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. If you haven't seen the movie Selma, you should definitely check it out. This person is John Lewis. John Lewis is definitely a very influential person. John Lewis is mostly known for being a U.S. congressman and for his civil rights activism, having been the chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or the SNCC. That's right. He was born on February 21st, 1940, near Troy, Alabama, and he grew up around there too. His parents encouraged him not to challenge the racism in the South. But he stood up for what was right and challenged segregation at bus terminals across the South. Though he got arrested, that didn't stop him. Do you know some other ways he affected the world, Gavin? Well, Kieran, he was elected to replace Chuck McDo as the chairman of the SNCC in 1963. And that same year, he played a key role in the historic march on Washington. In 1964... Lewis headed the SNCC's efforts to register African-American voters and organize communities in Mississippi during the Freedom Summer Project. He went on to do many other great things, and in 1986, he was first elected into Congress, for which he served 17 years in the House. Wow, that's really awesome. Gavin, would you like to learn about his books? Yeah. Great. He has written some memoirs and an autobiography, but a book series that he is best known for would have to be March, book one, two, and three. These books are autobiographies about the civil rights movement that he was a part of back in the 60s. Though I have only read the first part of book one, I highly recommend the series to everybody, as it is a graphic novel, so people that like comics and all will most likely enjoy it. So, Gavin, did you learn some good stuff about his books? Yeah, I did! Great! Now, 
Do you have another author you would like to talk about? Yeah, I do have one more author I'd like to talk about. I'll personally tell you this author. So just like Kieran talked to you about Kwame Alexander by himself, I will talk to you about Trevor Noah by myself. Okay, now before you say, hold on, Trevor Noah is a comedian, not an author. Well, first off, he is an author, known for his book Sport Crime and a young reader's adaption of it. And secondly, you would be surprised with what else he is. For example, before his comedy days, he was a DJ, working with a group of dancers that he would play the music for. And he's an actor, also, once appearing as a starring role in a local soap opera. And he went on to have many more television and radio roles. For example, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. And he actually is a pretty good ballroom dancer. Trevor Noah is a great person and is absolutely hilarious. Oh, and a fun fact is that everybody on this episode today that we've been featuring has been interviewed by Trevor Noah. Now, that's awesome. His book, Born a Crime, talks about how he was technically illegally born and he has, as he has a white father, a black mother, and that was illegal at the time of his birth. It also reflects on the many experiences in his life from when he was a kid to just recently. Like I said... Trevor Noah is a wonderful person and is really funny. So thank you to Trevor Noah and the Daily Social Distancing Show for giving us entertainment, news, and very laughable times when we are watching you and your show. That's all for Trevor Noah. And actually, that's it for all of the authors from both today's episode and last week's episode. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thank you very much for listening. Sadly, there won't be any more episodes of Amazing Authors anytime soon. But we really did have a great time researching these awesome people and talking about them with you. If you like the Hour to Empower Us work, check out our other episodes on YouTube. Again, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on... Amazing Amazing Authors! Hello everyone, and today we're going to do a recording of Ruby Bridges. So, Ruby Bridges was a young African-American growing up in Alabama. And then in first grade, what happened was that when she was graduated to a white school, she had to keep dealing with angry mobs. The angry mobs were trying to keep her and forcing her to not be at the white school because of this. Because, because then the security and it was trying to help her to the school and try to shove through a lot of angry mobs of people trying to get by. And then when Ruby Bridges had a bad life experience with being, with being forced by an angry mob full of angry people, Security had it to keep pushing through as she has to go alone. So what happened is that when she was growing up in Montague, Alabama, she was born in 1954, and it was still that time when segregation was still around. She used to be in a black school until she graduated and moved on to a white school. When she was moved to a white school, she was she was having a bad experience full of nervous systems and such as pain because of the angry mobs. When the segregation was over, Ruby learned and that black people are a lot of hatred and then and sometimes people can be nice. Then when she wills to stand up for, for herself and stand up for herself, she's always willing to make sure that black, blacks and whites have a good equal amount of education so they can go to school together, drink out of the same fountains together, go to restaurants together, and have fun together as black and white people. Thanks for watching this episode, and we will see you later. Bye. 
Hello, everybody, and welcome to Blow the Whistle, the best sports podcast out there. I'm your host, Liam Nikolakakis, and today we're going to be looking at some of the best black players in sports to commemorate Black History Month. Now, let's get into it. LeBron James is the best basketball player in the NBA and probably all over the world right now, and arguably the best basketball player ever of all time, also called the GOAT. He's compared to greats like Michael Jordan and others. He was born in December 30th in 1984, and he's 36 years old. His wife is Savannah Brinson, and he has three kids. Now, LeBron James is probably one of the most popular and we- most well-known basketball players ever. Every If you're into basketball, you know him, and you probably watch his games sometimes and are inspired by him, and he's really cool. Even if you don't know a lot about basketball, you probably know LeBron James. He's a big name and one of the greats in basketball. LeBron James was drafted in 2003 and has had a great career. He's been on a couple of different teams and played in a lot of NBA championships. He's won four NBA championships, which is a lot, and he is still playing, so he still has a lot of time to win some more. Right now, he plays for the Los Angeles Lakers, which is arguably one of the best teams in the NBA. And one of the reasons they are the best is definitely because of him. LeBron James is just a great player and definitely deserves to be on this list. Next up is Simone Biles, a name you've almost most definitely heard. Simone Biles is an American artistic gymnast with a combined total of, wait for it, 30 Olympic and World Championship medals. Biles is the most decorated American gymnast and the world's third most decorated gymnast. And she's still really young, only in her early 20s. She still has a pretty long career ahead of her where she can definitely take that first place spot and become the most decorated gymnast ever. Even for people who don't watch gymnastics or know a lot about it, Simone Biles is probably a name they know, and she is a great gymnast and definitely needs to be on this list. Next up is another legend. Serena Williams is one of the best tennis players ever, and she has won 23 Grand Slam singles. Even if you don't pay attention to tennis much, you've probably heard of her. She is really good and has been playing tennis for a very long time. She is probably one of the most iconic and best tennis players ever. She even has her own clothing line. She is also an inspiration to so many people out there that want to play tennis or just living their everyday lives. She's inspired so many people and is such a great player, so she should definitely be on this list. Next up on our list is an amazing soccer player. Kylian Mbappe is a French professional player who plays for Paris Saint-Germain and the France national team. He has amazing speed that most call explosive, great finishes, and a lot of aspects that make him a pro player. He's a true pro and really among some of the greats, and he's still very young. He's also won a couple of awards, and he's already won a World Cup. As he grows older, he will definitely place himself on the list as probably one of the best soccer players ever. Nafisa Collier is a WNBA player who plays for the Minnesota Lynx. She was drafted in 2019 and she was the round one pick six. She was drafted from the University of Connecticut, the Huskies, and was really good there and the Lynx made a really good choice in picking her. Her rookie year in 2019, she didn't even play that much, but still averaged 13.1 points per match. In 2020, again, she didn't play as much with only a one minute increase of playtime from her 2019 season. She managed to average 16.1 points per game. Nafisa Collier, 
is a really great player, and as she keeps on going and gets older and has more experience in the WNBA, she will definitely be playing a lot longer and averaging even more points. She's an amazing player and definitely a good person to close off the list. Well, that's it for today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this segment, and thank you for listening to Blow the Whistle. Once again, I'm your host, Liam Nicolakakis, signing out. Welcome to the short podcast. We do implant a lot of our own opinion, but we do stay to the facts. Hope you enjoy the segment. There are so many amazing black people, but today we're going to talk about two. Alice Allison Dunnigan and Chadwick Boseman. Alice was a journalist. She was an African-American journalist slash author and a civil rights movement activist. She was also the first female African-American correspondent to obtain White House credentials and the first black female member of the Senate and House of Representatives press galleries. Chadwick Boseman, our beloved Black Panther, After studying at Howard University, he became a well-known actor, winning the Hero for the Ages Award at the MTV Movie and TV Awards. Sadly, he died on August 28, 2020, due to colon cancer that he had been fighting. Even through his acting experience, he kept going. Thank you for tuning into this very short segment, Mixed Up, and come back in the distant future and listen to more. And now you will hear from many of our Hour to Empower contributors as they recite some of the poetry of Gwendolyn Brooks. Enjoy. Boy Breaking Glass Whose broken window is a cry of art, success that winks aware as elegance, as a treasonable faith, is raw, is sonic, is an old eye premier, our beautiful flaw and terrible ornament, our barbarous and metal little man. I shall create, if not a note, a whole. If not an overture, a discretion, full of pepper and salt and night and cargoes. Don't go down the plank if you see there's no extension. Each to his grief, each to his loneliness and frigidity revenge. Nobody knew where I was and now I am no longer there. The only sanity is a cup of tea. The music is in minors. Each one other is having different weather. It was you, it was you who threw away my name, and this is everything I have for me, who has not Congress, Lobster, Love, Lau, the Registry Room, the Statue of Liberty, Runs, a sloppy emblemation, a mistake, a cliff, a hymn, a snare, and an exceeding sun. I'm going to be reading the poem called Jesse Mitchell's Mother by Gwendolyn Brooks, so I guess uh, enjoy. Into her mother's bedroom to wash the ballooning ballooning body. My mother is jelly-hearted and she has a brain of jelly. Sweet, quiver, soft, irrelevant, not essential. Only a habit would cry if she should die. A pleasant sort of fool with with the least iron. Are you better, are you better, mother? Do you think it will come today? The stretched yellow rag that was Jessie Mitchell's mother reviewed her. Young and so thin and so straight. So straight, as if nothing could ever bend her. But poor men would bend her. And doing things with poor men, being much in bed, and babies would bend her over. And the rest of things in life that were for poor women, coming to them grinning and pretty, with intent to, to bend and to kill. Comparisons shattered her heart, ate her bulwarks, and sh- the shabby and the bright, she almost hating her daughter. Crept into an old sly refuge, Jessie's black, and her way will be black, and jerkier even than mine. Mine, in fact, because I was lovely, had flowers tucked in the jerks. Flowers were here and there. She revived for the moment settled and dried up triumphs. Forced perfume into her old 
into old petals, pulled up the droop, refueled. Triumphant, long, exhaled breaths, her exquisite, exquisite yellow youth. And welcome to a special segment where I will read a poem by Gwendolyn Brooks, the name of our school, and in honor of Black History Month by Gavin Griffin. All right, let's get right into it. Now, before Liam and I read the poem, he has another segment for his part, which is the Blackstone Rangers by Gwendolyn Brooks. I wanted to tell you a little bit about this poem. This poem is about the Blackstone Rangers. This was a good gang of people in Chicago, protecting people from the bad gangs. This group was so good that they were even funded by the government. But they eventually went corrupt and turned into a bad gang. The poem you're about to hear has a negative feeling toward the Blackstone Rangers. Hello everybody, my name is Liam and I'm going to be reciting the Blackstone Rangers with Gavin. And I'm going to be reading the Blackstone Rangers part one and part two. Before we get into it, I want to tell you a little bit about the Blackstone Rangers. The Blackstone Rangers was a gang that protected children from other gangs that might have been bad. But then later, the Blackstone Rangers gang was sadly corrupted and became another bad gang. This poem is directed with sort of negative feelings towards the Blackstone Rangers as of their corruptness, and even has metaphors to civil rights activists explaining that the Blackstone Rangers, if they hadn't gone corrupt, could have been like the, like civil rights activists like Malcolm X and others. Now, let's get into it. There they are, 30 at the corner, black, raw, ready, sores in the city that do not want to heal. Jeff, Gene, Geronimo, and Bob. They cancel, cure, and curry. Hardly the dupes of the downtown thing. The cold bonbon. The rhinestone thing. And hardly in a hurry. Hardly Belafonte. King. Black Jesus. Stokely. Malcolm X or Rap. Bungled trophies. Their country is a nation on no map. Jeff, Gene, Geronimo, and Bob. In the passionate noon. In bewitching night are the detailed men, the copious men. They curry, cure, they cancel. Cancel the images whose concerts are not divine, vivacious. The different tints are intense. Last entries, pagan argument, translations of the night. The Blackstone Bitter Bureau's bureaucracy is footloose, edit. Fuse, unfashionable denominations and dissent and exalting monstrous hand on monstrous hand. Construct, strangely, a monstrous pearl or grace. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, The Blackstone Rangers by Gwendolyn Brooks, read to you by Gavin Griffin and Liam Nicolakakis. Enjoy! Part 3. Gang Girls Are Sweet Exotics Marianne uses the nutrients of her orient, but sometimes sighs for cities of blue and jewel beyond her ranger rim of cottage grove. Bowery boys, disciples, whip birds, dissolve no margins, stop no savory sensitivities. Mary is a rose in a whiskey glass. Mary's Februarys shudder and are gone. April's fret frankly, lilac hurries on. Summer is a hard, irregular ridge. October looks away. And that's the year. Save for her bugle love. Save for the bleat of non-obese devotion. Save for somebody terribly dying under the flamantrophy of robins. Save for her ranger bringing. An amount of rainbow and a string-drawn bag. Where did you get the diamond? Do not ask, but swallow straight the spirals of his flask, and assist him at your zipper. Pet his lips and help him clutch you. Love's another departure. Will there be any arrivals, confirmations? Will there be gleaning? Mary, the shake dancer's child, 
from the rooming flat, pants carefully, peers at her laboring lover. Mary, Mary Ann, settle for sandwiches, settle for stocking caps, for sudden blood, aborted carnival, the props and necessities of non-loneliness, the rhymes of leaning. That's it. Thanks for listening to this special segment in honor of Black History Month. I'm Gavin Griffin, and I'll see you next time. Hi, my name is Kieran, and today I will be reading the poem The Bean Eaters by Gwendolyn Brooks. This poem is about two people and their experiences with poverty. Here is The Bean Eaters by Gwendolyn Brooks, read to you by Kieran Pauline. They eat beans mostly, this old yellow pear. Dinner is a casual affair. Plain chip wear on a plain and creaking wood, tin flat wear. Two who are mostly good. Two who have lived third day but keep on putting on their clothes and putting things away. And remembering. Remembering with twinklings and twinges as they lean over the beans in the rented back room that is full of beads and receipts and dolls and clothes, tobacco crumbs, vases, and fringes. Thank you. This was the Hour to Empower podcast, a podcast by Brooks students for Brooks students. We are your essential source for news, comedy, interviews, and more. Hour to Empower is brought to you by Bravo Performing Arts at Gwendolyn Brooks Middle School. For more information on how you can be a part of our shows, clubs, and classes offered by Bravo, please go to bravoperformingarts.org. And subscribe to us on YouTube for our latest episodes of Hour and Power. Thank you for listening.